greetings to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I would like to appreciate that you have uh, opened and are watching this video today. My name is Reverend Milson in Lovu, uh, sharing with you from the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 2. This is how it goes like. The prophet speaks of a servant who grew up in the presence of the Lord like a tender green shoot sprouting from a root in a dry and sterile ground. Shall we pray and expose the text? Heavenly Father, speak to us today and help us understand what you spoke of then and what you are saying to us now and what you would want us to do henceforth in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. God bless you. As we expose this scripture, the Bible says, like a tender green shoot, the servant of the Lord grew like a tender green shoot and like a root from a dry, sterile ground. The implications that can be drawn here is that uh, the context in, at which this servant grew was predatory, was hard, was sterile, was difficult, was not promoting growth. The conditions were difficult conditions were so severe and they were anti-growth, anti-fruition, anti-prosperity. The conditions were bedeviling the flourish, um, the flourishment of this uh, root, of this uh, tender shoot. It could not flourish, it could not bear fruit because of the dry, sterile ground. This was a prophecy about our Lord Jesus Christ, that he came into this world for a purpose to change, to transform this dry, sterile condition of the earth and the world systems so that it can promote the well-being of humanity young and old, employers and employees, children and adults, pensioners and those that are yet to be employed, are yet to contribute their labor. Today, May the 1st is Workers' Day, Labor Day. First and foremost, would like to appreciate and honor the servant of the Lord, Jesus Christ himself, who labored, sacrificed his life, sacrificed his blood, sacrificed his body, who sacrificially gave his life for us to change the world and to change the world systems and to change this earth so that it can be habitable. We appreciate, honor and congratulate and worship Jesus Christ our Lord. He was committed to, this, to his work of salvation, the salvation of the people changing their thinking, changing their hearts, changing the way how they believe, changing their belief system, and changing their conduct. This is the honor that we must uh, give to our Lord Jesus Christ. Moving further, we want to appreciate again the work that was done by those who sacrificed their lives, whose lives 
as shown and demonstrated by the great work, the, the, the industries that they served in, all the development, the infrastructure that we see, that we, uh, um, I mean, that we benefit from. All these industries, all these manufacturers, we applaud, acknowledge, appreciate, and honor them. As I move on, I would like to appreciate what workers, those that have pioneered, those that have gone before us, those that are pathfinders in this um, work, be it in offices, be it in industries, be it in farms, be it in, in, in parliament, be it um, in schools, in clinics, in hospitals, or everywhere in sea, everywhere. Anybody, everybody who has contributed to what um, the current generation is enjoying is given the honor, the praise, and um, the, the, the respect of the contributions that they have done. I say congratulations to you all. We honor and bless uh, the work of your hands. For those that are following us and the next coming generation, the work still needs to be done. It's not complete yet. In 1986, Workers were working in severe conditions in the United States of America, just for an example. They would work for 10 to 16 hours non-stop. They endured labor exploitation. They endured hardship. History tells us that uh, they were, their lifespan was between the age of 20 to 40 to 30. They will be completely exhausted and they will die. Child labor was common. Labor exploitation was common. Payment of the laborers, they were, they were hardly paid enough for them to live and to sustain their families. They will end with that which is so little that there will be more months at the end of their money. They would not manage to purchase property or even save for the future, save for holiday. In Zimbabwe today, what is the situation? of the laborers, of the workers. Are they earning enough to serve, to pay fees for their children, to send their children to school? Are they paying enough? When those in 1886 discovered that they were exploited, they mobilized themselves, they encouraged themselves, they, they got so agitated by the exploitation and they mobilized themselves to say no to exploitation anymore. And it brought about the change, the respect of the labor and the labor movement. And that's when there was the generation of uh, the eight our day's work. Today, out there, a day's work earns more than 100 US dollar, which is a minimum, a day's work. I'm not sure with us here in Zimbabwe, how much is your day's work? How much are you earning? The last time I checked is that the poor data line is $86,000, $86,000, above $86,000 for, 
for a family of uh, a six. What are you earning? How much are you earning? Are you earning enough to send your children to school? Are you earning enough to serve for the years when your strength would have gone? Are you paid enough to serve for holiday? Or you are being exploited? It is time to reflect. It is time to draw parallels from the events of 1886. We still have workers today struggling for justice. It is depressing. The majority of the working class are in extreme poverty today. Most earn below the poverty that's online. And we still have voices of freedom behind bars in the case of those that have been that they've tried to voice against labor exploitation. We still have my brother and my sister, the ability to mobilize tens of thousands of people in the streets of major cities to proclaim that uh, uh, this is what democracy looks like, to air out your views, to express that labor exploitation is inhuman. It is time to gather and strategize, to collectively fight back, resist, and break loose from the yokes of bondages. For employers, it is time to reflect. It is time to reflect. Let's look at James chapter 5, verse 4. James chapter 5, verse 4. What does the scripture say? It says, listen, hear the cries of the field workers whom you have cheated of their pay. The wages you held back cry out against you. The cries of the reapers you have reached, I mean, have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have spent your years on earth in luxury, satisfying your every whim. Now your hearts are nice and fat, ready for the slaughter. You have condemned and killed good people who had no power to defend themselves against you. Labor exploitation is evil before the Lord. It is time for employers to, re to, to reflect. It is time for lawmakers to reflect. They should reflect by hearing the cries of the laborers. Stop cheating them with your insignificant salaries. The Bible says what you are holding back is crying against you to the Lord. The Lord is hearing their cries. You are living in luxurious, I mean you are living a luxurious life. In your luxurious life, consider those that are in starvation, are in poverty, are in destitution, those that are working for you, those that you have employed. Consider they are blind and be repented. For the employees themselves, let's press up as much as we should contribute to the development of the country and to the development of the future generations. Yes, let's be obedient, let's work and excel and continue from where others left. Let's serve God, let's serve others, let's serve the nation. Let's work and manage the earth. Let's turn 
this earth into an inheritance for us and for others. May I propose that let's follow the work that our Lord Jesus Christ did. He transformed the dry, sterile ground so that it becomes habitable. Of this also to the future generation, we have role models, those that have gone before us, those that have, that have piloted the good works, who have served in various industries, hospitals, all the chains of ministries, in schools, in land, landscapers, in offices, in parliament, in all areas, you have, I mean, we have examples, we have prototypes, we have pioneers, we have pathfinders. They've demonstrated what it means to labor and to work and to be, um, uh, and to be selfless in their work. I pray above all, that the attitude that was in Christ Jesus be unto you. As a labor, labor with all humility, labor with all your mind and all your heart and all your strength to transform and to change this inhabitable uh, 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 earth to become a habitable uh, 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 earth, to change these severe conditions, dry and sterile conditions, to be a habitable, to be a fruitful uh, conditions. I urge you do so as a worker. I urge you employers, you duty bearers, you uh, policy makers, you who have got powers, who can change the environment for the workers that are struggling. Yes, we know that everyone is struggling, but look, consider the struggling of those that are in the working class, are at the bottom. Let's, let's, let's consider their plight. Let's not only entertain ourselves by living luxurious lives and forgetting those that are below us. The Lord says to you, the Lord says to those that are in luxurious uh, uh, lives and uh, and because they've exploited and withheld the payment for those that have sacrificed their time, their lives, their energy, their labor to work, but you are underpaying them, the Bible says the Lord's judgment is on you. You are setting a case for yourself. If it doesn't befall you, it might fall your children, and your children's children. So you rather change the world system and make it habitable for the well-being of all. Behold, the Bible says, a man reaps what he sows. If you sow goodness, you shall reap that which is good, prosperous, which is enriching, which is an honor due to you. I urge you, employers, I even urge the government, because the government is also has a responsibility on the conditions of the workers today. What is the situation of the pensioners' government? What is the situation of your employees, the civil servants? What is their situation? What are their working conditions? Are they severe? Are they, are they conditions that uh, uh, you'd want to work, you'd want to save, you want uh, your children to, to protect? Are they earning a salary that is worthy, your own child, that is worthy? You as an individual, put yourself in their shoes. You government, you in powerful positions, you that have been voted into power, you that has a, have a responsibility to make policies, to make judgment, to, 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 to set a, a salary packs. Consider what others are earning. Be considerate. 
be considerate. Today is the work day, workers day. Do not wait until the workers put two, their tools down and mobilize themselves against the, uh, your statutes, against the, the way I will treat them. They can make the whole world stop by taking into the streets. But you don't need to wait until it's, 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 it's at that level. You can transform, you can change, you can allow dialogue and listen to the cries of the people that are saving you. As I end, allow me to appreciate those that have gone before us, the pathfinders. Some may have changed uh, the working conditions, but the work is still on. Some conditions are still inhuman. People are dying in mines. Children are, I mean, are laboring, are serving, are being exploited. We have got child marriages, sexual harassment at work. Uh, women are being abused and unemployment, you imagine unemployment, people are not employed as they would love to be employed. Let's transform our nation. Let's transform our work. Like a tender shoot and a rot, he grew up in a dry, sterile ground. For what reason to change that sterile? ground so that it becomes habitable. If Jesus did it, changed it, we also must change it. We also must live at a better ground. Those that have labored before us, the pathfinders, they've done so, so that us and the next coming generation will live and work at better places and be enriched and enrich the coming generations. May God bless you, shall we pray. Heavenly Father, may you bless Zimbabwe. May you bless Zimbabwe. Bless duty bearers, bless workers, bless every employee. We appreciate the work that they have done. God Almighty, we set this as a challenge for the upcoming generation to learn to work for themselves and work for other generations and to set example in terms of work and employers to be examples in terms of treating employees in a human, um, with human dignity. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God richly bless you. Amen and amen.